Hello everyone, my name is Tung. I'm a graduate researcher from the Autonomous Robots Lab at the University of Nevada, Reno. In this presentation, I would like to share a set of planning approaches for the autonomous acceleration problem using aerial robots, especially in high-risk settings such as subterranean environments. I will also present our full autonomy step from the software development perspective and how we combine different components from the low-level flight control like BX4 to higher level planning and perception in order to deploy the uh, robot solution into the real robotics platforms. The main motivation for this work is to achieve the uh, resilient autonomy necessary to perform autonomous mission in harsh environment, for example, underground mines, urban infrastructure, caves, etc. This has a wide range of applications, including those of scientific exploration mission and search and rescue operation. However, such environments impose multiple challenges for current state-of-the-art robotics autonomy. First, the robot's perception could face with sensing the ready condition. And uh, second, the large scale of the environment and its diversity in terrain and geometry require a robust and scalable planning approach. Also, high bandwidth communication for remote control is often unavailable. And last but not least, it's difficult to deploy robots and acquire data needed for learning-based approaches. Therefore, there is a real need for truly resilient autonomy solution in such cases. The focus of this talk is about the informative planning approach for autonomous exploration in those settings. Basically, the exploration planner needs to uh, provide a feasible path for the robot to safely navigate inside a reversely unknown space and build a complete map of the environment using its onboard rain sensors. The challenges here are first related to uh, scalability of the planning solution in such a uh, large scale setting, and second is how to reliably deal with a variety of terrains and geometries. And furthermore, the planner must choose between multiple branches or level and decide where it should visit next or when the robot should return to home. In many practical scenarios, the robot also requires to perform data gathering tasks, for example, inspection with camera. Therefore, the planner should be able to balance between exploration and other goals as well. We aim to tackle all those challenges in our research. The planner is also designed to support different robotics platforms, including aerial and ground vehicles. In this slide, as you could see in the diagram at the bottom, it is the overview of the planning approach. The planner is designed at bifurcated global and local layers, in which the global planner is focused on uh, fast exploration within a uh, local subspace surrounding the current robot's position. The global planner, on the other hand, is uh, taken place over the global map and it is responsible for relocating the robot to other unexplored uh, areas when the robot reaches a dead end or triggers the homing operation when necessary. I will explain in further detail regarding uh, each planning layer in the coming slides. Regarding uh, the local planner, here we propose a graph-based method that first builds a graph locally around the current robot's position, then utilize the, uh, the die star algorithm to compute on the sorted path from the short vertex, and finally evaluate the acceleration gain for each branch. The path with the highest acceleration gain is chosen and sent to the controller to execute. The acceleration gain in this case is primarily computed from the volumetric gain, which is the expected volume perceived by the range sensor at uh, each vertex of the graph given the current map. The gain is further decayed by two factors. The first one is related to the length of each path to favor shorter path for rapid acceleration. And the second one is the direction of the path, this is to avoid certain changes in the acceleration direction which is often desirable in practice. The global planner, on the other hand, utilizes the, uh, the map on the global level to make decisions. 
in any case that uh, the local blender is unable to provide any effective solution the global blender is engaged to provide the global repositioning path to guide the robot toward another unmapped area it also keeps track of the uh, shortic path to return to home to trigger the homing operation when necessary the global grab is built incrementally and maintain only a minimal set of potential frontiers so it is fast to be used at any time in the diagram as an example they are a global graph with two frontier f1 and f2 the robot reaches a dead end at position 3 and the global planner is about to be engaged in this case the problem to decide which frontier does the robot should visit next is difficult due to the scale of the environment so in this work we report two basic principles the first one is extracting a set of reachable frontiers which depends on the remaining flight time and the time to get to the frontier and more importantly in the worst case the robots still have enough time to return to home from that frontier and second is, uh, is referring the close by frontier which are faster to arrive in order to continue the mission sooner as shown in the diagram there are three scenarios that could happen. The first one, which I call the worst case, in which the remaining time is not sufficient to visit any frontier. So the robot should return to home immediately. And the best case scenario is that the remaining endurance is still high, which allows the robot to visit the closest frontier F2 to continue the mission as soon as possible. Otherwise, the robot could visit the frontier F1, which he near the home location so it could explore a bit further into f1 direction then go home after that in this experiment we evaluated the whole planning framework in an active underground mine in winnemucca nevada the robot first continued the exploration with just local planner leaning toward the left branch you could also see here the environment is in low light and very dusty the global planner is then triggered once the robot reaches uh, a predefined boundary of the environment on the left side, which is limited for testing purposes. It is then repositioned toward the right branch and continue again with the local planner. Eventually, the homing is triggered to bring the robot to the starting location. Given limited flight time of aerial robots in general, we propose another approach using motion primitives, exploiting the dynamics of flying system to achieve high acceleration speed. The random symbols are 3D acceleration control signals, and each trajectory is further extended with an additional recovery segment to bring the robot to the hovering state immediately for safety reasons when it flies in the high speed. In this experiment, we demonstrate the proposed approach utilizing motion remedies for fast and agile acceleration in an underground tunnel. The robot was able to fly up to 1.8 meters per second and map the whole main tunnel. In this case, it's around 170 meters within only 90 seconds. This research direction is aligned with an ongoing challenge organized by DAPA called Subtly Challenge. The focus of the challenge is on three types of the subterranean environment, my urban, and cave. Each team could have uh, multiple robots and have a fixed amount of time to explore, search, and report location of predefined artifacts, such as a uh, survivor phone and uh, backpack. The whole operation is commanded through one single human operator from a base station. Our lab joined the challenge under the team Cerberus. The team makes use of several advanced platforms such as walking and flying robots. Overall, we focus on autonomy solution for each robotic platform that requires minimal or only high-level commands from the operator. The autonomy step is further robustified through map sharing and co-localization among the robots. The robust planning framework is being utilized for all the robots of the team Cerberus. In the next slide, I will show you an example.
In this video, I would like to share the utilization of the robust planning framework in the context of DAPA safety challenge. This is the result from a real mission happening during the Urban Circuit event. The event was organized in the spring 2020 inside an abandoned power plant in Seattle. The aerial platform in uh, this video, considering it as a scout for the team, was static from a gate entrance, then autonomously slow and mapped the environment. And finally, the homings were triggered and the robot safely flew back to uh, the entrance. In this slide, I would like to show several related work from our lab in which we investigated on how to optimize the uh, exploration goal with another objective, which is usually a case in a practice. For example, in the work on the left, we emphasize on how to minimize the localization error during the exploration, which is critical when we use camera for visual geometry. The video show on the right is related to another work that's aimed to focus the robot's observation to work visually salient errors while exploring the environment. This aims to gather more relevant data for further monitoring or inspection tasks. In the next part of this presentation, I will talk about our autonomy stack from the, uh, the software implementation standpoint. The autonomy stack is developed based on ROS. The low level layers are hardware drivers and the autopilot. For example, PX4 for flight control. Data from sensors and PX4 are converted to ROS by messages to communicate with higher levels. The middleware layer consists of major components such as planning, perception, and control. In the application layer, Avis and Qt are utilized for user interface and uh, further visualization. In further detail, this slide explains the main components in the middleware layer. From the left side, you can see the state estimation consists of three main modules. First, the SLAM solution, usually at low rate, for example, 5 to 20 Hz, which is common when we use camera or LiDAR. And second, the localization and map could be further improved, assume information sharing among multiple robots operating in nearby areas. And finally, the high update rate, 50 Hz, estimator mainly for control, it fills autopilot's IMUs and odometry information. Moving to the right, the collision checking and gain calculation for planning is separated into map server, which is responsible for map updating, saving server, and the map planner interface, which abstracts the connection between planner and the map server through the common APIs. So it's also uh, managed order practical checkings such as no-go or geo fan zones beside the collision checking. This is important since it allows us to experiment or test with different mapping frameworks without rewriting the planner code. The local and global planners are separated into two packages and have several key functions shown in the diagram and also as explained uh, before in reverse part of the presentation. The mission manager in this case manages the uh, interface with the UI and performs system health check to inform the user. Uh, the output from the planner is sent to planner control interface, which ensures the uh, independence between the planner and the controller as well. It performs further like trajectory smoothing as well as follow a state machine to keep track with the controller. And finally, we use uh, a model predictive control for trajectory following. We also leverage the simulation to evaluate extensively and further improve the planner. The simulation is based on ROS, Gazebo, and the open source Rotex. In the simulation, a variety of sensors such as camera and LiDAR are available. We also customize the parameters to be close to the real hardware on our robots. Uh, we also include a set of different underground environments for further evaluation, such as uh, a few long-wall mice and uh, a specific Roman pillar mice 
and on and also a few other environment that reconstructed from uh, real underground facilities. The aforementioned planners are open source in uh, our GitHub, including the uh, graph based and motion remitted based planner that we have been using in the uh, subte challenge project. Some of them are still in progress, but uh, we will share them soon. In our software stack, we have been using several other uh, great open source packages that you might find them useful as well. For example, the Voglogs and the uh, Automap packages for mapping, uh, which is very important for the planner. Moving forward, we are investigating in uh, building a miniaturized platform based on the BX4 Autopilot that is able to explore faster and deeper into narrow spaces and also lightweight to be carried by other ground platforms to extend the uh, exploration range. A fly example of such platform is uh, shown in this video. With that, I would like to thanks again for your attention and I'm looking forward to your questions as well as uh, further discussions.